guys, this is Stormouse03. Welcome back to my 100% walkthrough for Prey. This is episode 10, and we are going to be headed through life support. We're going to do a quick stat check, as always, just to make sure we're all on the same page here before we get moving. So, in the last episode, we got the last of our 30 types of food and drink, and our achievement for that. We are at 202 crew members and visitors located, 115 emails read, 50 transcribed messages listened to, and 5 Starbender books read. We've also found all of the black market dead drops at this point, so if you're looking for those, they are in earlier videos. If you're looking for the food and drink types, those are in earlier videos, but I'll also copy those down at the bottom because you'll be keeping a checklist and because the locations of some of them are just random finds, you might still be looking for a couple of those, so make a checklist, check it off, that's my advice. And the last sort of collectible thing is the messages from Morgan to themselves, and we have found three out of five of those at this point. So we are going to head right along through life support, and I will see you on the other side of the loading screen. Not sure you got your transcribe. Morgan is making her way to you now. Warning you and anyone else. If you did shoot her accidentally. Or on purpose. Morgan? <laughs> I thought you'd asked. I... Morgan? Okay, so we are now in life support, and we're taking out a couple of etheric phantoms. This should be the last research on etheric phantoms that we need, which is pretty cool. And we're going to be finding several crew members upstairs here. So, first we have Ari Ludnart, who is crew member number 203. We have Augusto Vera, crew member 34. We have Erica Teague, crew member 34. Did I say 34? I swear to God. <sighs> So we have Ari Ludnard, who is crew member 203. We have Augusto Vera, who is 204. We have Erica Teague, who is 205. And she also has transcribe number 51, which we're going to listen to. We also have Carol Sykes, who is crew member 206. So in the bathroom, you will find Alton Weber, who is crew member 207. And we're going to head through this little maintenance access panel right here to find Tobias Frost here in the... Um, maintenance shaft here 
And so Tobias Frost is going to be crew member 208. He is also carrying transcribe number 52, which we're going to listen to. And he's also carrying this psychoactive particle injector. So I'm going to pick that up because that's going to have to do with a little side quest thing that's, I mean, it's optional, but I'm going to show you how to do it anyway because we're going to be going to that room in anyway, so we might as well. So I'm going to pick that up and going to listen to his transcribe here. You wanted to speak to me? Yes, I'd like to arrange a time to oversee installation. We're also going to throw a recycler charge at this grate here so that we can grab the security station key card. Special. What precisely is this thing supposed to inject into our water supply? I'm not at liberty to say. Uh-huh. Well, then, we have a problem, Tobias. Dr. Kelstrup has already seen and approved it. I'm going to need to see a signature from Alex or Morgan or something like that. But, so, until I see ink on the dotted line, you'll just have to keep showing your special injector to Dr. Kelstrup. Okay. So we can now get into the security office. And the engineering operator in here can repair your suit if you need. There's also a turret here that you can use if you want to. Excuse me. And you can use your code for the security safe. And this we got off of Erica Teague as well. And that code, like many, is random. And so you just want to be aware of that. You have to pick it up. You can't just enter the code that you saw me enter because it probably won't be the same code for you you can download the area map off of this computer. And this uh, security station computer also has three new emails that we're gonna read. So they're gonna be 116 through 118, priorities, corrective action, and missing engineer. And so we're gonna head down here where we came in and you can bust open this window here and look on the supply depot computer for email number 119 equipment reminder Okay, and so on our way to the lifts, we're going to find crew member 209 Penny Tennyson. And we're going to head on down the lifts. Down here, there's going to be one of these operators. And oops, another operator here. And we're going to find um, another crew member there. But actually, she is not the next one on my list. That honor belongs to the person that is up here. So we're going to climb up here. We're gonna... Actually, I want it to be about there.
Okay. <laughs> You've got to be kidding me. Okay. So we're going to climb on these pipe things. And we're going to find crew member 210, Max Weigel Goats. And then we can head this way and locate crew member 211, Raya Leruit, whatever. Crew member 211, Raya. We're going to then head in this direction. And we have a phantom here. And we're going to... Kill him. And when we come in here, there should be another phantom in here. Yeah, Kirk Rimmer. <laughs> so... This is why you always make a save before you go into these rooms. So I recorded this all earlier. And Kirk just wasn't in here. He was just not here. <laughs> and what I think happened was it, it spawned a Voltaic Phantom in, instead of a Thermal Phantom. And I think because the Voltaic Phantom, when he walks around... There's an area of effect around him of electricity on the ground. And so what I think happened was that area of effect, as he was walking around, killed Kirk Rimmer as it, like, loaded me in and then despawned the body. And that is the only explanation that I have for why this phantom was not here. Uh, and so if that happens to you and and a phantom is not in an area where they should be you can either not worry about it because there are plenty of people to find way more than you need for the achievement and just call it you know a loss of one so you can do that or you can reload a save that is before you entered that area and if you do that then they should hopefully respawn like kirk did for me but like I said, they give you a few extras. You have about 12 extra people that you can find. And so don't worry about it if that happens to you and there's one that just isn't available to you. Um, you can also go to the security station upstairs and highlight the person's name. If you can do that, uh, if they are not available, so like Kirk was not available to me when I was playing through a second ago, if they're not available, if they've despawned for some reason, then they that once you click on their name, it'll initiate the little marker for where they are. But then a few seconds after that, it will say failed and fail the little thing to find the person. And so that's kind of how you know that that somebody has died and kind of despawned from the world. And if that happens, then the only thing that you can do is reload an earlier save to try to get them to spawn back in. But like I said, hopefully that won't be an issue for you guys and people will be where they're supposed to be. I'm just trying to help you out just in case they are not. So Kirk Rimmer right here. And uh, Kirk Rimmer also has transcribe number 53. Kirk Rimmer is crew member number 212. So we're going to listen to that. Alika, this is Kirk Rimmer. We're in escape pod 89. Everyone is secured, but the launch controls aren't responding. Did you follow all the steps on the launch card exactly? Yeah, the klaxon even sounded, but the hatch won't close. We can't separate. Hang on. I'm looking at the schematics. There should be a remote sensor on the explosive bolts. Alika, please, hurry. I see all the leads, but wait, this can't be right. Can you launch us from there? Can you at least close the goddamn hatch? Uh, no, I don't think so. Is there a manual crank of some sort? Remmer, Remmer, do you copy? 
Okay, so crew member number 213 is Umi Isaka, right there. Crew member 214 is Anong Lao. If you go into this pod, you will find crew member 215, Emily Carter. Emily Carter also happens to have transcribe number 54. So we will listen to that. Uh, as we look at Hank Majors here, who is crew member 216. Okay, so those are all the people that are down here. And before we head to the place where we're going to ultimately be going, I'm gonna come back up here. head through decontamination. There will be a couple of thermal phantoms in this new area. Some lovely engineering operators. Okay, so I do not have very many pistol shots left. Throw on our shoddy. And we're going to head upstairs here. Near these fan controls here, we are going to find Alan Bianchi, crew number 217. Oh, stop squirming around, you little jerk. Stand where I can kill you. Okay. So we have Alan Bianchi here, and what we want to do right now is shut off the fans so we can go down in here and pick up this piece of debris that's clogging up that fan. And then we're going to want to get back out of here before they turn back on because you don't want to get crushed in the fans. Look, there's our next thermal, thermal phantom over there. That's pretty cool. So now we check the fans and it should say that they're all good to go. Yep, all fans okay. So, 
air filtration control room. We are going to activate decontamination. Atmospheric decontamination procedure initiated. Oxygen flush commencing in five, four, three, two, one. Hazardous atmosphere emissions. And so we're doing that. We can pick up transcribe number 55 and listen to that. So there is a poltergeist in this room. And it's being a little finicky jerk. So we're going to read this email on Jean for Fol Bauer. Jean's computer. It is precautions and thanks. And that is email number 120. And then I'm really, really going to kill this poltergeist because, man, is it ever annoying. Okay, both well, guys dead. Okay. So we're gonna head back out here. And ah, here is our other thermal phantom. you go, buddy? Oh, you weren't dead? Come on now. Okay. Cool. So I wanted to show you how to get into this room. Although there isn't really much in here, you can break this window and kind of. You should be able to crouch through here. I swear I've crouched through there before. But since that's being kind of annoying, <laughs> the other way into this room is through that hatch over there so if you kind of build yourself some platforms you 
come over here, open this access panel, and get in this room. To not want to die, Mr. Engineer Operator Jerk Biscuit. Okay. So, this has the supply code to the storage room. There's not really anything in there that you absolutely need to have, but just for the sake of thoroughness. I wanted to show you how to get in here. I swear, I swear you could get through this window. Yeah. Look at that. So I guess you can get out, but you can't get in that way. Wait, no, you can get in that way. Why was that not working before? I don't. Don't ask me. <laughs> don't ask me. It's because I'm recording, that's why. Okay. I, I swear games conspire to make you look stupid when you're recording something. Because as soon as you say, oh yeah, you can just do this thing, it doesn't work. <laughs> In fact, I'm not going to go this way right this moment. I just realized my health is all ridiculous. So I'm going to head up here. I'm going to toss a recycler charge in the med bay. And pick up all the stuff that it recycled. and grab a medical operator. Because if you're someone who just loves to hoard things like, like I do, you don't ever want to use any health items. So, this is so much better. So there's that guy, and then we can also go in here and talk to our engineering operator. Where'd you go, buddy? Oh, there you are. Hello. You're going to be corrupted when I come back through here later, aren't you? But not right now, which is the important time. So, yeah. So you can use both of those to refill your health and suit status while you are in life support. Okay. And now we are going to well, we can we can get the we can get the supply closet since we went ahead and got the code to that. And show you guys what's in here. So there's so there's a lot of materials in here. And there's some neuromods, which are cool, and there's med kit, which is cool, and bunches of 
stuff that you can recycle. There's also a turret, which is neat. If you want to use that, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna use that right now. But so that's that's kind of what's in there. I am going to create some more nine millimeter bullets because I'm gonna want to use those here in just a moment. And I'm gonna go this way. And so now you want to get into, well, the, the goal of this whole entire thing is to get to uh, the power plant, but we can't get in here because there is a technopath that's controlling the door. And so we are going to Really? Come on out of there. I don't want to waste my pistol bullets on you. Okay, he's being a butthead. So, <laughs> we're going to want to get up because we can't get into this room right here because it's locked. And you'll see that there's a, a technopath in there that has power turned off and just all kinds of things. Oh, now, now you want to... Now you want to attack me. Okay. So to get in to this room. Oh, come on. We're going to... fall. Why did we fall? How did we fall? Okay. Jeez. <laughs> really? Fell through that crack? I swear. I swear. The platforming in this. And, it, and it's not the game, it's me. Being awful. Okay. Gonna get up here. Gonna get up here. Gonna turn a light on. And then you can make yourself a nice little ramp of glue. No? Okay. Fine. And get right here and enter this access panel. And now we are in the water treatment facility and you'll see that there's a a technopath down there and so we're going to want to kill that. I'm gonna go ahead and quick save here as I would suggest for you just in case this fight goes weird because these technopaths can be kinda no joke. So you can shoot him from up here which I actually wouldn't recommend. I would recommend you grabbing your shotgun I'm getting right up on him. Q. 
killing him. And then there's one of these stupid little operator poopy heads. As well. Okay. So that's Technopath done. And don't really know where his body went, but in any case, we are going to turn on the power. To the water treatment facility. And there are several crew members in here, so right here under these crates. We have Kane Rosito, crew member 218. We have Cynthia Dringus, crew member 219. We have something that we need to plug up with our glue gun. And we have Roger Meyer, crew member 220. And we have the recycler. That we can use for the couple of little items that we have. Okay. So we're going to want to plug up this glue again. We're going to head into this office up here. There is a Voltaic Phantom that's kind of lurking around up here. And we should have several computers. So we have Price Broadway's computer, for which we do not have the password. There's a bunch of gin and stuff. And here we have the password for Price Broadway's computer. And on it, we will find two new emails, emails 121 through 122, I care and working under the influence. You'll also have Price Broadway. This is a um, this is to unlock a terminal downstairs. So we're going to want to do that for a little bit later on. And there's a bunch of alcohol in there. So if you're missing any of these types of alcohol, most of them are here around his desk. Most of the alcohol in the game. It looks like everything except for the Tamizdat vodka. And the stuff in the supply crate might be random, but it should all be alcohol. So next we have Abigail Foy's computer. And so she'll have email 123, Harvesting Protocols. We're going to continue here and we're going to find Pablo Myers who is going to be crew member 221 and we're going to come over here again there's some pomegranate moonshine just in case you still needed that Come 
here and here and we're gonna jump over here and get into the water quality lab in here we're gonna have another corrupted operator because they are my favorite And we're going to have Johnny Brungen, crew member 222. So after that's all said and done, we can place the psychoactive particle injector into this slot right here. And that completes that little side quest there, which is pretty cool. Have some neuromods, have some materials. Just a few little goodies in this room. And I'd suggest taking anything that you want to take so that you don't have to come back through here. We can bust a hole in this. And last thing that we are going to do is go downstairs. There's going to be another Voltaic Phantom. Not that. That's not going to do anything to the Voltaic Phantom. So there's going to be another Voltaic Phantom downstairs. What you can do, because it is kind of irritating down there, is you can shoot him from up here. And he will usually go up the lift to come after you. And then you can you can deal with him up here where you have more room to maneuver. Which I think generally is a good idea. And we're gonna come downstairs here. I'm going to put on my shotgun. And so we turned on this computer from Price Broadway's computer upstairs. This is the console that we turned on. And we're going to select Harvest Eels. This is going to drop Price Broadway's body as well as some stuff and a mimic. A greater mimic. Which we're going to kill. And then we're going to be able to find Price Broadway, who is crew member number 223. And so that is pretty much everything for this area. You can you can definitely go through here and pick up all of the all of the, the items and use the recycler to recycle everything. Use the fabricator to fabricate yourself some more ammo. I'm going to do all that stuff off camera because there is no point in you watching me do those things because it's just not very exciting to see. But once you collect all your materials and do everything that you want to do and uh, refill on ammo, you're going to want to come here and you'll see that after you killed that technopath in the processing pl plant or processing water processing area, uh, the power plant is now open. And so we will be heading through there in the next episode. We're going to do a quick little stat check just to make sure everybody is on the same page. And so we are currently, and you should currently be, at 223 crew members located, 123 emails read, 55 transcribed messages listened to, and 5 Starbender books read. You will also have three of your five Morgan messages listened to, just like we did at the beginning of this one, because neither of the last two were in this mission. <laughs> so, 
that is that. Remember to go through, pick up everything you need to pick up. Please do remember to refill your ammunition, at least for your shotgun and your pistol, because you're going to want to have a stack of that for the next area. And I will see you in the next episode where we will move through the power plant. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you there.